Every month, a whole bunch of crazy crap happens in the world of gaming, and every month, Game Ranks gathers together the most comment-worthy stuff, at least, and shares a little chuckle with everybody. Or sometimes just a, you know, collective jaw drop. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the weird gaming stories of November 2023. Starting off at number 10, apparently the Saints Row reboot that was planned was very different than the Saints Row reboot we got. In a retrospective that was released by YouTuber Mr. Saint Godzilla 21, who aggregated a ton of information, the game was originally going to center on the OG Saints, Johnny Gat, Dex, Aisha, Pierce, and Shondi. However, and maybe it's going to stop seeming weird at this point, but however, Deep Silver, the publisher, the suits, the business guys in control said, no, we want new faces that no one knows, and we want them to just constantly spout that snappy dialogue that you see in every Disney or Marvel movie that everybody's starting to hate. That's the Saints Row we want. So rather than make something that the fans of the series, you know, the people who might potentially buy the game, would like, they used the name to try to get attention for a, a game that I guess was going to open a new series that I every Gen Zer was supposed to love. Well, I got news for you. Gen Zers are just like everybody else. They like good good things and they dislike bad things. <laughs> I understand that the argument is that sensibilities change, but uh, you know, what's weird here is that they've exposed that sensibilities don't actually get that different. The generations united in their complete and total disdain for the Saints Row reboot, and unfortunately the people who came up with Saints Row Volition had to close due to it. It's not like they made this game of their own volition. Dr. Evil Pinky Finger raised. Eh? Eh? At number nine, Blizzard is releasing an expansion for World of Warcraft called The War Within. And for the most part, people think, oh, that looks pretty cool. But, and let me read this to you out loud. If you grab the $90 Epic Edition, you can uh, get 30 days of game time, guaranteed access to the beta, and three days worth of early access to the expansion itself. Now, they did this with Diablo 4, and I'm sure that the success of that is probably why they're doing it here. Here, there was a way that you could get Diablo 4 early, and it was by paying more, but Diablo 4 isn't an MMO. In the world of the MMO, three days can actually be a pretty big difference in terms of where you are in the game, and to give people the ability to pay more and essentially be in a completely different tier of progress is... It's not regarded well by folks who want to play the game. I'll sum it up uh, from one Reddit comment I saw about it by a user called It Isn't Me Too. They said, this isn't early access. It's just the de facto date the game comes out. They're just charging an extra fee to people who want to play the game on the release date. Don't be fooled by PR speak. And again, with a game that your statistics and progress don't have the kind of bearing on your community or around you, it maybe doesn't matter that much, but that's precisely why people are angry about it here. What's weird is that Blizzard just decided that what's good for the goose is good for the gander and didn't even think about the difference between types of game. If it works in Diablo 4, which yes has online features, but does not work in the same way as an MMO, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work in the MMO. And number eight, Doritos made a silencer for eating Doritos on any kind of voice chat. Now, this is, of course, primarily aimed at gamers, but if you're on a Zoom meeting for your employer and want to start eating Doritos, Doritos has you covered. The uh, piece of software is actually called Doritos Silent. Currently, it's only available on PC, but it will also be expanded to other devices as well. Uh... I think it's kind of silly. Uh, the software itself probably really works. I'm not going to say that it is fake, but I kind of think they're doing this for attention and we're kind of giving it to them. But uh, if that's the case, well played Doritos, well played.
At number seven, so the Halo Combat Evolved throwback Master Chief armor in Halo Infinite costs more than twice as much as Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, the entire game on Steam. At its regular price, one can buy Halo for $9.99. That is counting no sales, which often the game is affected by sales. I saw it recently for 75% off, $2.49. But uh, you can buy for $22, Master Chief's original Halo armor in Halo Infinite. Now, Halo Infinite has actually been doing a lot better than it did at launch recently. The community is mostly happy, uh, but that clearly isn't perfect because there are still things like this. And to be fair, people aren't really dissing the armor itself. They seem to think it's a pretty good interpretation of the original armor, but it's $22. A dollar for every single year that has passed since the original Halo came out. People find that distasteful and I'm inclined to agree. I think just for some armor in a game that you had to buy, hell, let's just let's even just say that it's a free-to-play game. That's still pretty steep for a, a, a entirely cosmetic thing. And number six is, uh, well, Bungie laid off perhaps one of their biggest assets, Michael Salvatore, who is a famed composer at this point, responsible for all of Destiny's music. He goes back about 20 years with the company and was very responsible for a bunch of Halo music as well. And in all seriousness, it's kind of a big wow moment. Bungie has been really going through it with these layoffs, but they're laying people off like the comms team and, and, and people who you don't generally consider vital to the creation of games. And uh, I mean, the music guy, the guy who is responsible for a large amount of Bungie's identity, that's wild. And number five, the Overwatch League is gone. Activision Blizzard is transitioning away from, well, not necessarily competitive Overwatch, but the structure that they cooked up for the Overwatch League. Now, see, I found this pretty interesting because they were talking earlier in the year that they thought this might prove unsuccessful. Well, that's usually a, an indicator that one person doesn't want to be associated with what they see as a coming failure, and that one person was probably correct. Part of the thing is that they modeled it after very normal sports leagues. They did it based with cities and regions and well, that's not really how online games works. On top of that, they were charging some pretty crazy franchise fees. I guess somewhere in the neighborhood of $20 million for a city to have an Overwatch team. Now, it's important to understand that this doesn't mean Activision Blizzard is done with competitive Overwatch. It doesn't even mean that the regional model is dead. I, I don't really know what they're going to completely give up with because apparently Activision Blizzard is still talking with companies on having a league next year. So we'll see exactly what that looks like, but I have a feeling the $20 million franchise for a regional esports team is just not tenable, which duh. And number four, you know how Shigeru Miyamoto never actually said that thing about a delayed game is eventually good, but a rush game is forever bad? Yet yeah, there's never been any evidence that he said that. Now, that doesn't mean it isn't a wise quote, and uh, Gaben just claimed it for himself by changing it a bit. Old Gabe Newell, he came out in a documentary about the creation of Half-Life and said, late is just for a little while, suck is forever. This came in a section about the delay that Valve decided to do with Half-Life. That was essentially the difference between it being a Quake 2 clone with a bunch of cool ideas and being Half-Life. I mean, so here's the thing. This is absolutely a, a word of wisdom from Santa Gaben and even was a word of wisdom when it was a fake quote from Shigeru Miyamoto. But we also live in a world with patches. Cyberpunk 2077 is kind of directly in contradiction to this nugget of wisdom. However, I still want to stand by it and every person, including Gabe Newell, who has taken on this ethos because it's just worth doing things right the first time. And that's an old nugget of wisdom that predates any of us who are alive currently. If you're going to do something, do it right. And number three, 
There have been in-game Black Friday ads popping up in Assassin's Creed titles at very inappropriate times. And Ubisoft says it's the result of a technical error. Uh, I'm inclined to believe them. A lot of articles spun this in a way where they tried to act like Ubisoft is lying to us in the headline and then have to explain it. So these ads were just showing up at weird times, like they were popping up when people were going to the map, which is obviously not the time that you would be receptive for an advertisement. If anything, that would just infuriate you. But Ubisoft put up a statement that our intention was to display a promotional message for Assassin's Creed Mirage as part of the franchise news in the main menu of other Assassin's Creed games. Unfortunately, this technical error caused the promotion to appear in one of our in-game menus instead. We want to ensure the best player experience possible and these disruptive pop-ups were promptly removed once we learned of the issue. We appreciate your understanding as we continue to investigate the cause of the issue. Now, I keep seeing headlines for this all over the place that are saying, in-game Black Friday ads in Assassin's Creed games are the result of a technical error, says Ubisoft. As though they're appearing to everybody and Ubisoft is just claiming it's an error. No, they appeared to a few people who reported it and Ubisoft took them out of the game. Like, I'm all for taking a big old dump on Ubisoft, but it seems pretty clear to me that this is a mistake and they know that it just pisses people off. Like, they're not stupid. There's a lot of things that they do that they do know makes people angry, but they know that it's manageable anger. If they started throwing up ads in the middle of games like this, like when you pop up the map, that's not a manageable anger, and they know that. Business is about trade-offs, and this would be too much of a trade-off. And I think that it's a weird thing that happened, you know, as a whole, just that ads were popping up when people were popping up the game menu. But I also think that it's weird that it's it seemed like most articles about it couldn't just flat out report on it as a bug. Instead, trying to sensationalize it and make it into Ubisoft lies about their advertising. And I am really not one to defend corporations. They are doing some ridiculous crap on a constant basis. But when we're criticizing them, it really has to be for something that's real rather than something drummed up. Otherwise, when we criticize them over real stuff, it doesn't matter. And number two, Sony delayed half of its upcoming live service titles because, oh, I don't know, maybe nobody wants them. They'd originally planned to have 12 live service titles up by March 2026, but apparently a lot of them have been pulled back due to quality concerns. I'll quote Hiroki Totoki, the Sony president, directly. We are reviewing this. We are trying as much as possible to ensure these games are enjoyed and liked by players for a long time. Of the 12 titles, six will be released by by fiscal year 25, that's our current plan. As for the remaining six titles, we're still working on that. And I'm just gonna say this, I'm not a person who says a live service game can't be good. And if they delay it and that results in these games becoming good, if that results in them coming up with ways for games to exist on an ongoing basis that keep them good, I'm okay with it. But I think what happened is the live service bubble pop. People hate these games and they hate them because they suck. So you can't just shovel them out be like, ah, here's a popular brand live service game, a Last of Us live service game, which is, by the way, one that's in development. They can't just do that. People don't want to play these meaningless, busy work missions every day in order to get X amount of points to buy something in the shop. Or, you know, skip it and do it with real money. I don't know. I'm, I'm a person that's definitely jaded on live service games at this point. I don't think that it's impossible for one to be good. I really don't. But... What this says to me is that they understand it's either going to be us quietly phasing these games out so that we aren't questioned about it and we only release six of the planned 12 live service games and see how that goes because wow 12 sounds like an oversaturation of that market or maybe they realize that quality actually matters. I don't know. We'll see. And finally, at number one, and this is going to be a little bit of a difficult one to explain, but a student who got a job live streaming games in China for $420 a month died after a month of marathon live stream gaming sessions, and the company who was employing him offered his parents $700 in humanitarian aid after finding out about it. Now, this was also with them 
denying any responsibility in the death, which is likely why it was worded as humanitarian aid. But this company had an agreement in place with the streamer that it required 240 hours of live streaming a month for that $420 base salary. For reference, that's one third of the month in hours. 10 full 24 hour days of streaming. It does sound to me as though they were a little bit responsible for his death. To me, that 240 hours sounds kind of like something they picked so that most people wouldn't get to that point and get the base salary. And I don't know if any of you know how much the Chinese government is cracking down on gaming addiction. Perhaps to an inappropriate extent, uh, but I bet that company is going to be in trouble soon. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.